Let's go over and see what Leo is going to do with that job that just came in. Hello, Leo. Brought you a helper. The boss and I have just given Don the inside story on how this transmission works. Good. I'll put him to work. Don't know how much help I'll be, Leo, but I'm willing to try. What are you looking for in this job? Well, the owner says the transmission won't shift up to the higher gear after he gets underway. Says it stays in the lower gear all the time. That's bad, isn't it? No, not after you find out what's causing it. And that's where some fellows seem to get in trouble, locating the cause of the condition. You know, some fellows seem to think the way to run down troubles is to replace one unit after another until they finally get the transmission to work. And that's all wrong. Sure, that's not the way to do it. Actually, Don, the trouble has to be one of only three things. Either the electrical system may not be calling for the shift at the right time, or the hydraulic system may not be responding the way it should, or if both of those are okay, there may be some mechanical difficulty inside the transmission that keeps it from shifting. Yes, and it doesn't take much to find out which of the three is causing the difficulty. Like Leo's going to show you, Don, a few simple tests, and then you know. That's the kind of stuff I'm looking for, Tech. Just where do we begin, Leo? Well, take this car that doesn't upshift, for example. You know, the transmission can't upshift as long as current goes to the solenoid. If the electrical system's okay, the current should be turned off when the car is going about 14 miles an hour in the driving range. Then the first thing to find out, right at the solenoid, is whether the current does go on and off, isn't it? Right. That's easy to do, and all you need is a test light. Let's clip one wire of the test light to the solenoid terminal, and the other to the ground connection. Then, the light should come on when I turn the ignition key, because current should be coming right from the battery. It's on, all right. Okay. So we know we have current to the solenoid. That holds the pilot valve down so the transmission can't upshift. Now, with the transmission in neutral and the engine running, I'll speed up the engine and the test light should go out. How is it? The light's still on, Leo. Okay. That means we have electrical trouble. There must be a ground somewhere that keeps the solenoid contacts in the relay from opening up. There are just a few places where a ground could cause that kind of trouble, Don. It might be in the wire from the TH terminal of the relay to the governor. It could be the governor points aren't opening. This wire to the kickdown switch might be grounded, or the trouble might be in the kickdown switch itself. Which isn't very likely. Where do you look first, Leo? Well, we can start tracing things down right here at the relay. First, we'll connect one lead of the test light to the TH terminal of the relay, the other to the negative post of the battery. As long as there's a ground in the circuit beyond the relay, the light will stay on. Now, we'll disconnect the wire at the kickdown switch. If the light goes out now, when the engine speed it up, we'll know the trouble was in the kickdown switch. It's still on, Leo. Then we know the ground's in the governor circuit. Want me to take the cover off the governor? No, not yet. First, we should check the wire from the relay to the governor. Might be a ground from that wire. And so we disconnect the wire from the governor. If we still get a light, there'd be a short in the wire. The light's still on. Our trouble must be in the wire. Sure, that bare wire grounds the circuit all the time. So it doesn't make any difference whether the governor points are open or not. So we tape up the wire and then fix it so it can't rub against the frame again. Say, hey, Leo, better show Don how to clean up those governor points in case they'd been sticking. Sure, we'll take the cover off and clean these anyway, Tech. You see, Don, the governor points ought to be clean because 
Condensation can cause corrosion on the points, and you'll have poor contact. So, first we take the movable contact arm off the cover like this. Now we can clean up the contact on the arm with a clean cloth. Then, we can clean the stationary contact with a piece of cloth on the end of a pencil or with the eraser. While you have the cover off the governor, you'd better move the governor contact plunger up and down to be sure it's free. A few drops of fine oil will fix it if it's sticking. Not much to that. Now let's try it with that wire fix and see if the light goes out when it should. Okay. You watch the light, Don. It went out that time, Leo. Good. So I guess we're all set now. Just goes to show how you can't miss if you really know what you're looking for. And look at how much time you save when you know where to look instead of hunting all over the place. Yeah. But if the trouble wasn't electrical, then what? Then you check the hydraulic system. And that means the rear wheels have to be able to turn. So we have to get them up off the floor. Otherwise, we wouldn't get any hydraulic pressure because the oil pump doesn't turn until the rear wheels start turning. For safety's sake, just be sure you always block the car up with jack stands. Then there's no danger of the car coming down off the jack while the wheels are running. That's right, Tech. Now, by taking the interrupter switch off, we can look inside the case and see whether the piston moves or not. Suppose you shine this light in the hole and watch while I put the car in gear and speed up the engine. The piston came up okay. Now it covers the hole. But suppose it didn't move ahead when it should. Well, one of the first points to check, Don, is the oil level in the transmission. It should be level with the bottom of the filler plug hole. And speaking of oil, always be sure you have the right kind. You ought to use only 10W engine oil, either in summer or winter. Next, you should check the oil pressure by connecting a gauge to the oil passage in the case, like this, and then watching it when you speed up the engine. Don't let that pressure fool you, Don. Some cars may have more than others, but anything over 40 pounds at 15 miles an hour is okay. Supposing it's too low. Then you take out the relief valve and clean up the plug and seat. Speaking of relief, how about taking a break long enough for the record to get turned over? Now, how about the two control valves, Leo? You know that the pilot valve is held closed by the solenoid and is opened by a spring. It has to move freely. You can check it by removing the solenoid and pushing the valve down against the spring tension. It ought to come right back up, all the way. If it doesn't, you take out this plug in the bottom of the pilot valve housing, remove the spring, and push the valve out. You can smooth the valve with crocus cloth to free it up. While you're working on valves, you ought to clean up the main valve, too. If it doesn't move freely, it can cause trouble, especially on the downshift. If it needs freeing up, you can get to it by removing the plug beneath it. If the transmission has a plug above the valve, the valve can be pushed down from above. There's one other point to check, Leo, and that's the oil strainer. It should be removed and cleaned regularly because if it gets clogged, the pump can't get enough oil and the pressure will fall off. Do you ever have a case where the hydraulic and electrical systems are all right? And still the transmission doesn't upshift like it should? Yes, once in a while. You can have mechanical conditions inside the transmission that'll affect its operation. Like, for instance, there may be a binding condition in the direct speed shift rail, the automatic clutch sleeve, or the freewheeling control sleeve. That would interfere with smooth shifting. Or, maybe, the teeth of the direct speed clutch sleeve or the teeth of the main drive pinion may have become damaged so they don't mesh easily. Then you'd get only a partial engagement. I guess if you have any of these conditions, you have to pull the transmission to fix them, don't you? That's usually right. You can't tell much about mechanical troubles any other way. Well, that takes care of no upshift. But say, Leo, supposing this car wouldn't downshift, what would you do then? We'd check the same three things, Don, 
electrical, hydraulic, and mechanical, although the chances are the condition would be found in the electrical system. For the upshift, we wanted the current to the solenoid to go off. But for the downshift, it has to go on. So we hook up a test light right at the solenoid. If it doesn't come on when the ignition's turned on, it means a loose connection, a poor contact in the relay or in the governor, a broken wire, or else a blown fuse. Checking the fuse is the easiest thing to do, so when in doubt, put in a new one. But don't put in a new one until you fix whatever made the old one blow. No sense in burning out two of them. What connections would cause trouble? They could be at the solenoid, at the relay, at the governor, or at the coil. Any one of them could keep current from reaching the solenoid, so you should be sure they're all clean and tight. If that doesn't help, the next thing is to check the relay to see if the contacts are closing. To do that, turn the ignition on and ground the TH terminal of the relay. The relay contact should close and the test light at the solenoid terminal should come on. If the relay doesn't work, put on a new one. Yes, but don't go throwing parts away until you know your trouble isn't a broken wire. So check at both ends of every wire to be sure current really is getting through. If the relay is okay, but to get light at the solenoid only when the TH terminal is grounded, you know there's no ground in the governor circuit. So you check the governor points, as I showed you before, to be sure they're clean and working. Chances are you'll clear up your trouble right there if it's electrical. But suppose there's a light at the solenoid and still no downshift. Then we'd take the solenoid off and see whether it's working or not. To test the solenoid, you reconnect the lead and then set the solenoid on top of the transmission, like this, so it'll have a ground. Then, when you turn on the ignition, the plunger should snap out, like this. If it doesn't, you need a new solenoid. Suppose the solenoid was okay, then what? Then you'd check the interrupter switch with a test light. If you didn't get a downshift on the kickdown, you check the kickdown switch to be sure you're getting a ground. If you still didn't get a downshift, you'd take a look into the transmission itself, like we did on the upshift. For instance, sometimes that lock screw that holds the shifting fork to the rail may work loose. That might keep the transmission from downshifting. Say, Leo, how about when the car shifts, but it's late or takes too long? Well, the governor counterweights could be sticking, so they wouldn't pull the points apart as soon as they should. So you'd check them and free up the action with a few drops of fine oil, as we said before. But if the upshift takes too long, the trouble's probably too fast in engine idle, so the gears don't synchronize as quickly as they should. That could be caused by a number of things. Yes, sometimes when you don't get the upshift when you should. It may be a sticking hinge pin on the bottom of the accelerator pedal. That's right. More than once we've found so-called transmission trouble just by freeing up the throttle linkage. You know, Leo, there's one thing that sometimes causes a lot of confusion. That's when the car upshifts as soon as it starts to go. How about covering that one? Well, when that happens, you know the main control valve must be opening up. So either the pilot valve isn't being held down to cut off the pressure, or the main valve is sticking in the up position. The most likely cause is that the solenoid isn't pushing the pilot valve down. So the first thing to do is to turn on the ignition and use the test light to see if you're getting current at the solenoid. If the light doesn't go on, you know the trouble's in the electrical system. And just as when you had no downshift, the cause could be poor connections, a bad relay, a broken wire, the governor points not closing, or a blown fuse, just as we talked about before. But if you are getting current at the solenoid, then either it's gone bad and has to be replaced, or else the pilot valve needs freeing up. In that case, you'd want to check the main valve, too. Well, 
Now that you know how to check for no upshift, no downshift, and for immediate upshift, you should be of some real help around here. Of course, diagnosing one of these transmission jobs isn't that easy. But it's not so tough either if you just stop to figure out two things as far as the electrical system is concerned. Which two things are those, Tech? Whether the troubles could be first, because the current wouldn't turn on, or second, because it wouldn't turn off. Right, Tech. And believe me, the little time it takes to figure that out saves you plenty of time later, and a lot of unnecessary replacements. And take it from a man who knows, there's no faster way to boost your stock with customers than to fix up a transmission in record time. And the secret of that is just know-how based on common sense.